Health with Elam Online. Uh, we are so excited that you have joined us this morning uh, or whenever you're watching this. Uh, but yes, it is going to be a great service together. My name is Ben Ryan. I am the Youth and Young Adults Pastor uh, in Telford Elam. Uh, so yeah, this is Telford Elam Online, something completely new to so many of us. If you have never ever joined us before, then you are so, so welcome. Please join in with the online chat on Church Online platform or Facebook or on YouTube as well. Uh, please remember to share this with your friends uh, and family members and we are just loving uh, having you with us each week, hosting you each week and being able to connect with you uh, every single week. So this morning you're going to hear from Pastor Leslie, he's going to bring a fantastic word. You're also going to hear from Sam Ajipong, our elder here at Telford Elam. He's bringing a, a just incredible testimony, I've uh, had a sneak preview of it already uh, and it's great, the story uh, of his life and God's faithfulness in his life. You're also going to be hearing from the worship team. Uh, so Nina and myself are going to be playing this morning and you're also going to get a very special video some point in this service uh, of the whole team together. So look out for that. So to start off today, I'm going to pray uh, and then we're going to go straight into worship. So Father God, I thank you for all that you are doing, uh, Father, in our lives and through our lives. Father, I thank you for all those NHS and key workers tuning in. We thank you for all that they are doing as well, God, on the very front line of this pandemic. God, we commit this morning to you. We commit everything to you. We commit our lives to you. And Father, I pray your Holy Spirit will be with every single person today. In Jesus' name, amen.
should I worry? God's no worry. So why should I worry? God's no worry. So why should I worry? Good morning, my name's Isaac. God bless you today as we prepare ourselves to partake in communion. The first reading is taken from John chapter 6, verse 51, which says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. When I think about communion, I think about the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus Christ paid on the cross of Calvary for us. I think about all of our sins being held on that cross. I also think about the gift of eternal life. It mentions in this verse about living forever. As this isn't about living on earth forever, it's about reigning in heaven with God eternally. I also think about being thankful to God, first of all for sending his son Jesus to die on the cross but also for leaving these emblems in the bread as the body and the juice that we use as his blood to be able to remember the death and resurrection. Jesus Christ came down to earth through the Virgin Mary down from heaven. He was to be beaten. He was to be crucified. He died and rose again on the third day, which we know as Easter. 40 days later, known as Ascension Day, which was actually on Thursday, his earthly ministry was to be completed and he was to ascend into heaven and to be seated at the right hand of God. In a week's time, we celebrate Pentecost Sunday when the Holy Spirit was to come down on the disciples. The second reading is taken from Colossians 3.17, which says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, when I think about this, I think about the fact that we can't take it lightly, um, this communion that we are preparing ourselves for. It is a very sacred moment, not just to be done as a ritual. If we are to do it in God's glory, we are to do it in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we believe and love and know the Lord Jesus Christ, we are able to partake in this and be able to partake in having the gift of eternal life. Just before we go and head and take the bread and the juice, I'd just like to pray. Father God, we thank you, O Lord, for the gift of eternal life. Thank you, O God, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. We thank you for all that you have done in this time of coronavirus, for helping us, for being with us as a church, for helping us to grow and believe and trust in only you, Lord. We know, Lord, that this isn't all that there is in this life that there is an eternal life that we are all looking to be there for. We all want to know more of you, Lord. Reveal yourself to us more, Lord, in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, in, in being with you and fellowshipping with you and worshipping with you more, Lord. And ask you, God, as well, to bless everyone that is watching this right now, to bless them, bless their upcoming weeks, be with them in this time of lockdown. Help them and to be able to depend on you, God, and show yourself as the great I am in their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. This bread represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the juice representing the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please now take a few moments just to reflect and give thanks to God for these emblems that he's left for us. Amen.
living in the spirit. Now changing changing to be more like Jesus should be the goal of every believer. That is why Paul works so tirelessly in order to present a believer matured in Christ. But the starting point really is being born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. I remember clearly many years ago at the university kneeling by my bedside and inviting the Lord Jesus Christ into my life. There was this bus, this excitement and boldness to share what the Lord had done in my life. Then over the years as time passed, you slip into this uh, ordinary Christian living. I went to church prayer times, a career to pursue, getting married, having children and all the responsibilities, and eventually moving to the United Kingdom. I still went to church, I still prayed at times, but then the whole Christian experience was just ordinary. And there were bouts of discontentment at sometimes, which did not last long. My job in the United Kingdom took me to various places, and eventually we came to Telford, Shropshire. It was recommended to us to look out for the Elim Pentecostal Church. But interestingly, before the week before we went to the Hadley Methodist Church, only well, to find the door shut. And it was about ten thirty in the morning, so I suppose we were late. Anyway, we eventually went to the Elim Pentecostal Church where the Holy Spirit was talked about more often and I desired to uh, seek after him. I got prayed over by the pastor to receive the Holy Spirit and I determined in myself to humble myself, uh, to uh, confess and repent of any known sin, then to read and study the scriptures and also to invite the Lord Jesus Christ to live to come into my life afresh. You remember the song, Spirit of the Living God? There's a line in it that says, For, uh, Fill me anew, fill me anew, Spirit of the Lord, fall afresh on me. Now this became my anthem. I, re I realized that anything I was able to do was by the power of the Holy Spirit working in me to produce this Christ-like uh, character. I can testify that over the years, perhaps the last 25 years, things have gradually changed. There's been a desire to pray and to fast more and to worship and enthusiasm to read and study the Word of God. Now those uh, TV uh, programs I used to watch have lost their appeal. Perhaps I'm getting too old. But really, there has been more joy, more thankfulness, more peace, you see, more love, more generosity, more submission, more contentment. And I believe this is all the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. The past is past, but I'm desperate that the years ahead of me will be lived in the will and purpose of God until Christ be formed in me. I'm not there yet, but I'm pressing on towards this goal. Thank you. We heard a really great testimony this morning from Sam, 
our church elder, who spoke about being changed to be like Jesus. He spoke about how he came to the UK. This morning, we're carrying on the theme of Jesus is powerful. This morning, I want to look at that, that Jesus is not just powerful, but all powerful. He's above all. He's greater than any you could imagine. On the 3rd of May, Ben and I preached together in our live service on Jesus is perfect. And the week before that, I preached on Jesus is glorious. He's the one who is glorious from Revelation 1. I said that he is transcendent and yet imminent. Transcendent means he's so much bigger than we could imagine, so much greater. He's set apart from us. He's different from us. He is God. But also imminent means that he's the one who comes up close and personal to us. And he shares his love and his grace and his truth with us. He's full of compassion. So this morning, I want to pick up and think about Jesus being all powerful and look at the story of Saul's conversion in Acts chapter 9. It's one of those great stories. It's one of the great proofs of Christianity. The fact that this man who was hell bent on destroying the church becomes the church's greatest advocate. And so I'm going to read a little bit from Acts chapter 9 and then we're just going to think upon it in five different ways, thinking about Jesus being all powerful. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on his mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you were persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, Go over to Street Street, to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I have heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he has authorised, and he is authorised in by the leading priests to arrest everyone who calls upon his name. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings, as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptised. Afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength. And we know God will bless the reading of his word to our hearts. So here we have this amazing story. Saul is on a mission, a mission to destroy the church and to persecute the followers of Christ. He's attacking the name of Jesus. And yet, in this heavenly encounter, as he's doing so, as he's on his way, then Jesus intervenes in his life. And from that moment onwards, Saul's life is completely changed. In fact, within a little while, he's renamed Paul. As he's moving forward, as he's moving forward in this purpose of destroying the church, Jesus steps in. I think it's just an amazing story. And so in verse 3, Paul is, Saul, Saul is moving forward, thinking about what he's doing. And when he, he comes to this part near to Damascus, then immediately we have this idea that Jesus breaks in with a light from heaven. 
So a light comes from heaven and overcomes his darkness. Saul had been moving in darkness. He had been a man who had been driven by so many other things other than the proper fear of God. He was driven by religion, by his learning, by a zeal for his people. And yet Jesus broke into his life. This all-powerful Jesus comes. This is not the Jesus who ministered. And this is the one who appears to him after his resurrection and ascension. And he comes to Saul. In John 8 verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. The light of the world broke into Saul's darkness. And as a result, Saul himself then becomes blind. He cannot see. He loses sight in his eyes. But he's also taken to his knees before the all-powerful Jesus. As a result of this, then he hears the voice from heaven. So he's blinded, but he, this light comes and he hears the voice of Jesus. Then in verse 4, the lovely thing is that whenever... Jesus confronts Saul. He doesn't look over and just say, oh, Saul, please just give your life to me. He says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Whenever I preached a few weeks ago in Revelation 1, I did say that Jesus stands amongst the candlesticks. He identifies with his churches. And here it was the church, Jesus' followers, who were being persecuted by this man. And yet, the wonderful thing about it is that Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? The fact that Saul was attacking and having some put to death and some imprisoned and beaten for the name of Jesus and for the sake of Jesus. Jesus took that personally. He says, by doing so, you're attacking me. You are challenging me. Why are you doing it? He stands with us. No matter what you're going through today, if you're a follower of Christ, then Jesus identifies with you. He stands with us. In this period of lockdown and all the things that are happening with COVID-19, especially in this process of releasing us from the lockdown, it's a slow, laborious process. Jesus stands with us. He is the head of his church. He's imminent. He's the one who stands amongst the candlesticks. Ephesians 4.15 says that he is the head of his body, the church. And so Jesus always identifies with his church. So Saul is going to Damascus. This heavenly light comes, it breaks into his darkness, and then Jesus speaks to him. In verse 5, he tells him who he is. I am Jesus. What an amazing statement. I am Jesus. I am the one who you are persecuting. In Matthew one twenty one, whenever the angels had appeared and given the heavenly annunciation of what was going to happen, Joseph was also told in a dream that he was to name his son Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 21. That idea of Jesus being saviour is always tied together. Yeshua, this idea of Jesus, the one who saves, the Lord saves. Well, I am Jesus. I am the saviour whom you are persecuting. I am the one that you are challenging. Isn't that? He is the saviour. He is still the saviour. He comes to bless. He comes to give us life but he's also the saviour he delivers us from our sin and from the things that hold us back then in verses 10 to 12 and verses 15 and 16 he linked Saul immediately in with other believers so he sends him to on into Damascus and Saul has this vision about somebody coming named Ananias to lay hands on him so he can receive his sight and Jesus tells Ananias to go and do this he tells him, now there's a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. Go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. And as Ananias does that, Ananias is the one who's then sent as well to go. So Saul arrives in this house of this man called Judas. He's staying there. He's fasting. He doesn't eat or drink for three days. He's just seeking God. He's praying God. And then God sends somebody into it. And perhaps there's a stronghold or there's an issue that you're facing. I'm going to say to you that prayer and fasting is a powerful way to break through strongholds. Perhaps you're in a place where you don't know what way to turn. 
As you pray and fast and ask God, God will speak. He does bring that revelation to us. So Saul had an amazing encounter with the risen Jesus. But now the Lord sends other believers across his pathway. And that's something that Jesus does. There's so many people who have given their lives to Christ online during this lockdown. There's so many people who are watching online services. But one of the great things is that we can never do it in isolation. Jesus still connects people to his church. After all, it is his church. And the church in many different varied forms is really important. But here we have this encounter. So Ananias, with all his fear and worry about this Saul who's persecuting other believers, obeys the Lord and he takes the step of faith and he goes. And then in verses 17 and 18, the lovely thing is that Jesus gives Ananias the privilege of laying hands on Saul. And so as Ananias lays hands on him, a miracle takes place. Saul receives his sight, he regains his sight, and also he's filled with the Holy Spirit. And perhaps you're the person that Jesus wants to send to somebody today, perhaps online or in a message, with this message of hope. Jesus still uses ordinary people like you and I to do his miracles and to bring hope and salvation to others. Here, Saul is filled with the Holy Spirit. The all-powerful Jesus demands our all. He always does. Brother Yun, the Chinese Christian whose story is recorded in The Heavenly Man, he wrote another book called Living Water. And in that book, he's, he writes and he reflects upon the church that he discovered in the West. He came out of a very persecuted setting in China. He was a lot of pressure and yet a lot of power and authority and miracles were taking place. Many miracles, many much power and authority was evident in the church. And he came to the, the West and he said this. He said what he sees as one of the great challenges of the, for the Western church. Multitudes of church members in the West are satisfied with giving their minimum to God instead of their maximum. And that's something that God still challenges us about today. I wonder, am I giving my maximum for God? Whenever Jesus turned up in Saul's life, for the rest of his life, Saul was wholeheartedly committed to the cause of Christ. He followed Jesus. Maybe you're in that place where Jesus has turned up in your life during this period of lockdown. I want to say to you, there's more yet to come. Jesus doesn't just turn up and then leave us as we are. He takes us by hand and he says, come follow me, follow me. He's all powerful, no matter what you're facing, whatever the darkness may be in your life or the issues or the sin or the things that are really holding you back. Jesus has the power to unlock your darkness. His light can penetrate and break through your darkness. Maybe what you've heard this morning has challenged you. Maybe God's Spirit is calling you to give your all to Jesus and follow him. You can be assured of his love. He died for you. That's what Easter's about. Your past can be dealt with. But the wonderful thing is, he's willing also to walk with you today and sort out your present and give you not only a good present, but also the promise of a better tomorrow. Because of him, we can indeed walk with a confidence and a faith that he will always be with us. Knowing that Jesus desires a relationship with you, perhaps if you have never prayed this prayer, you could pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sorry for the things I have done wrong in my life. I ask for your forgiveness. Thank you for dying on the cross for me to set me free from my sins. Please come into my life. Be my Lord and Saviour. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and let me walk with you forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you've spread that, please do get in touch. Do message us. So just to recap those five things. Jesus, the light came from heaven. He is the light of the world. He can break through any darkness. He stood, he stands with us. He identified with the church. He says, Saul, you're persecuting me. Yes, you're destroying the people, but I'm the one that you're persecuting. And he still stands with his church. Thirdly, he tells him who he is. I am Jesus. And perhaps Jesus is going to give you a revelation today of who he is. The fourth thing is he always links us with other believers. After lockdown, please do connect with churches. 
It's going to be a huge step for many of you. It's going to be a completely different world. But you know, Jesus still stands amongst his believers. Online and of course, in person. And the fifth thing is, he desires to fill us with his spirit. That was the thing that happened to Saul that changed everything. He was filled with the spirit. It says these words in Acts 1 8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, beginning in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He still wants to fill us with his power to be his witnesses. I want to proclaim this over your life, this prayer, this declaration from Colossians 1 verses 18 to 20 as we finish. Christ is also head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. And so I declare that over you, your loved ones. I just pray that God will move. So thank you for listening. God bless. Coming up are the announcements, so please take note of all that is happening on Telford Elam Online this week. We have Facebook Live on Tuesday, Friday and Sunday at 7.30pm. Kids Extravaganza is on again this week at 11am straight after the normal service. 
Awaken Youth is on Thursday at 7.45 p.m. and that's via a Zoom chat, so please check it out. We have online life groups. Please visit our website for more details about them. And please, please keep up to date with us at telfordelam.com and on all of our social media platforms. Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. I'm on the leadership team here at Telford Elam. We would like to thank you so much to everyone that has given to the ministry of our local church. Your giving goes a long way. If you haven't been online to give before, you can do so by going to telfordelam.com forward slash give, where you'll see a number of different ways to give. You can also give by texting CT010 to 64647. So I encourage you to get out your phones and give it a go. Or, of course, write to us a check and send it in the post. Again, thank you so much, especially to those who used the given person but are now given online. Thank you and God bless. So that was this week's announcements, uh, but if you need any more information, please go to telfordelam.com. You will find lots of information on there. Uh, there's blogs also on there, prayer page. Uh, you can listen to some previous podcasts on there. Uh, but yeah, please do get onto that uh, website right now, telfordelam.com. Uh, even if you just need some clarification about times when things are happening, you will find it all on there. Please also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon. Uh, so you can get notifications. If you are new, you can email us at online at telfordelam.com. You can send us a message again on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, whatever you want to send us a message on. Uh, just let us know you are here. Say hello to us. We would love just to connect with you uh, and just journey with you uh, through online church and maybe into a physical location as well uh, at some point in the future. Just remember that Kids Extravaganza is at 11 a.m. I don't know about you guys, but I love Kids Extravaganza. Yes, I do have kids, but I know that lots of you guys are watching that even when you don't have kids because it is so awesome. So please check out Kids Extravaganza. You may have to refresh your browser uh, to be able to get it, but uh, yes, it starts at 11 o'clock, so please do tune into that. That is all from us this week. But I just want to say a massive thank you for tuning in, uh, and I'm just going to pray uh, before we finish. Father God, we lift you high. We thank you for all that has happened today. We thank you for all that's happened over the last few weeks. Father, we continue to lift up all those that are suffering, all those that have lost loved ones due to this pandemic. But Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy during this time. We thank you that you are at the centre of everything, God. We thank you that we can trust in you, that you are faithful, that we can put our hope in you, that you have a plan for our lives for this world. And so Father God, help us to partner with you in that plan. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.
We know that you are for